Back in 1986, America was first introduced to Daewoo Motors by the way of the Pontiac Le Mans, a South Korean-built, rebadged Opel Cadet. Daewoo would later break from GM and export their own models to the U.S. to compete against other Korean and Japanese rivals, but dismal sales led to General Motors buying them out after only five years. This is a story of Daewoo Motors in North America. This is my old car. Imported, affordable driving excitement from Pontiac. Thanks for all the suggestions to do an episode on Daewoo Motors, a brand that even I almost forgot about until I started getting so many suggestions for it. Before I go any farther, we need to talk pronunciation. Like many brands outside of North America, this is one that can often be said incorrectly within North America. Daewoo, the obvious alternative. In an earlier episode, I had mentioned the company's name, calling it Daewoo. After at least one viewer pointed this out as being incorrect, I realized that I was pronouncing it the way I remember hearing it over 20 years ago. The emphasis should be on the first syllable, not the last. The Daewoo Lanos from $14,750. So going forward, I'll try to say it as Daewoo. Feel free to debate this one in the comments. It's called Daewoo. Daewoo? Daewoo. Prior to their association with Daewoo, General Motors first established their presence in South Korea back in 1972 when they took over Toyota's share of Shinjin Motors, which was branded as GM Korea. Although built in South Korea, the designs were of German origin, based on GM's Opel models sold in Europe. In 1976, the company, now a 50-50 joint venture between GM and Shinjin Motors, changed names again to Seihan Motors. The name Seihan Motors didn't last long, as their own financial difficulties resulted in them in being acquired by the Daewoo Group in 1978 and officially became Daewoo Motors in 1983. Although Daewoo was now in charge, that didn't stop their association with General Motors. At least not yet. Back in North America, GM was reaching the end of production of one of their most infamous cars, the Chevy Chevette, and its Pontiac clone, the 1000. That car shared a platform with the rear-wheel drive Opel Cadet C, even though the Chevette looked more like the front-wheel drive Opel Cadet D, hence the reason I accidentally showed the wrong Cadet picture back in my Chevy Chevette episode. GM's next generation cadet, the Cadet E, had the potential to be the starting point for the next Chevette if the Chevette's poor sales hadn't led to its ultimate cancellation by 1987. Instead, GM decided to use their association with Daewoo Motors to take the German-designed Cadet E and rebadge it as a Pontiac to be sold in the United States as the Le Mans, launched in mid-1987 as a 1988 model. Pontiac previously had a Le Mans model for five generations, between 1961 and 1981, although probably best known for their muscle cars, sold during the second and third generations between 1964 and 1972. Now the sixth generation would be a Le Mans in name only, as a Korean-built subcompact. Classic Le Mans fans were clearly not impressed with GM's attempt to put this formerly revered automotive nameplate on a Korean import, at least those fans living in the United States. Canadian buyers were instead sold the same car by the Passport International Automobiles dealership network, owned by GM, which also sold models from Isuzu and Saab. So in Canada, the same car was branded as the Passport Optima. Available in hatchback and sedan body styles, the Le Mans was also offered in sportier GSE trim starting in 1989, which was equivalent to the Opel Cadet GSI. Sportier trim meant a more powerful engine, but just barely whereas lesser models could be had with 1.6-liter four-cylinder engines making between 74 and 92 horsepower. The upgraded models had a 2-liter 4, making a whopping 96 horsepower. That same engine was also available in the Pontiac Sunbird, a car I once owned, and I can safely say that I never once called it a fast car. By 1991, the Le Mans got a facelift and was rebranded in Canada as the Asuna, or is it Asuna? That's another one to debate the pronunciation. But these updates couldn't hide the continued quality issues that plagued the car in its last few years, resulting in its cancellation in the U.S. and Canada after the 1993 model year. Although that wasn't the end of the car, as Daewoo Motors introduced the next generation as a Cielo in Europe and other markets as a 1994 model, still based on the original Opel Cadet E platform. Although around a million Le Manses were sold, the eventual failure of the Le Mans led to Daewoo Motors ending their joint relationship with GM in 1992 and begin to develop their own replacement cars. Introduced in late 1996 as a 1997 model, their first export to North America was the Lanos. You just got 
got killed by a Daewoo Lanos, mother It was available as a four-door sedan, or as a three-door or five-door hatchback, the latter two being referred to as the Romeo and Juliet. And yes, those were the actual names. The design of the cars came from the Italian design firm headed by Giorgetto Giugiaro, the same team behind many other cars as I noted in my Volkswagen Rabbit episode. Engine options range from 1.5 or 1.6 liter four-cylinder engines, rated between 86 and 106 horsepower. The Lanos was followed in early 1997 with a slightly larger but still compact Nubira, available as a four-door sedan or hatchback, or five-door wagon. The Nubira offered a Daewoo-built 1.6 liter, or a two liter, from GM's Australian subsidiary Holden. Later in 1997, production started on the Laganza, a mid-sized four-door sedan, the Laganza was also a Giugiaro design, with the Laganza name derived from the Italian words elegante, or elegant, and forza, or power. And compared to other Daewoo models, it had more power, with a 2.2 liter four-cylinder making 133 horsepower. Daewoo tried to market the Laganza, complete with its fake wood trim, as a luxury car, which virtually no one took seriously. All three of these cars were intended to compete against similar cars from Hyundai, Toyota, and Honda, but they simply couldn't compete at all thanks to a level of quality and reliability that hadn't improved much since the days of the Pontiac Le Mans. It didn't help that parent company Daewoo Group's financial condition was in dire straits, leading to bankruptcy in 1999, and their chairman, Kim Woo Chung, fleeing the country to avoid responsibility for the company's failure. He would later be convicted of fraud and embezzlement and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Despite the bankruptcy, GM decided to buy most of Daewoo Motors' assets in 2001 and discontinued the Daewoo models in the U.S. by 2002, as their sales simply didn't justify their continued imports to North America, nor did they want to continue advertising what had become a seriously tarnished name. But GM still saw them as a way to sell cheap, affordable cars in America, just under different names, so maybe American buyers wouldn't recognize their true origins. In 2002, GM Daewoo's first car, the Kalos, was intended to be a replacement for the smallest car in Daewoo's lineup, the Lanos, and had been in development prior to Daewoo's bankruptcy. Although it was given several different names across various world markets, in America it was called the Chevrolet Avio, or is it Aveo? Yet another one I've heard both ways and can't figure out how to pronounce. I always thought it was Avio back in the day, so I'm sticking with that for now. The Avio was available in America and Canada as either a four-door sedan or five-door hatchback and would later be rebadged as the Pontiac G3 in the US and the Pontiac Wave in Canada. No matter what the name, it has been widely regarded as an awful car, and its reason for existing probably wasn't so much to compete with other subcompacts, but I suspect it was instead to help lower GM's overall fuel economy average. Also in 2002, the former Daewoo Nubira was redesigned and remarketed as the Daewoo Lassetti. Although it never made it to North America, fans of the BBC show Top Gear should recognize it as one of the reasonably priced cars the show's guest stars would race around the Top Gear track. It's gonna be an ass! Oh my god! Well In 2008, GM's Daewoo division also produced the G2X sports car, which was built on the same GM Kappa platform as the Pontiac Solstice, Saturn Sky, and Opel GT. I missed mentioning the G2X during my earlier Saturn episode. Saturn? No way. By 2009, another even smaller car reached North America, called the Chevy Spark, based on a Daewoo model originally called the Matisse. Although technically, the Spark first appeared in 2007 as a concept car, called the Chevrolet Beat, which was featured as the character Skids in the movie Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Hello. Stop saying that! Betrayed by the country oh you love. Oh my goodness, I'm in the car, okay? You're not alone! The overall look of the Spark was very similar to the Beat, the exception being that the Beat was a three-door hatchback as compared to the five-door Spark. As of the recording of this video in 2021, the Spark is still in production. By 2011, GM Daewoo officially changed its name back to GM Korea, a name it last used between 1972 and 1982. This resulted in the Daewoo name being dropped from all models across the world, and in most cases being rebranded as Chevrolet. Starting in 2011 as a 2012 model was the Avio's replacement, called the Chevy Sonic. Unlike its predecessors, the Sonic had its North American models built in a GM plant in Michigan, and at the time was the only U.S. plant building subcompact cars, which, considering the huge popularity of crossovers and SUVs, shouldn't sound all that unusual. The Sonic remained in Chevrolet's American lineup until its cancellation in 2020. All right, in the thorax! Yeah! <laughs>
As of 2021, GM Korea is still building cars in Korea that are sold in America, namely the Chevrolet Trax and its platform mate, the Buick Encore, as well as the Chevrolet Trailblazer and its platform mate, the Buick Encore GX. It's very likely many owners of these cars don't know that their cars are Korean built, nor would many of them care, since the improving quality of Korean built cars, such as those from Hyundai and Kia, has greatly improved Korea's overall reputation as automakers. But considering the extremely low resale value old Daewoo models still have today, we all know that same reputation definitely didn't exist 20 years ago. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. You know, I think I can just see the nose of the car sticking out, which is pretty shoddy. Thank you.